याद है Why don't you get undressed and get under the covers and I'll go down and fix you some bra? Oh, no, that won't be necessary. Now you listen to me. I could feel you was trembling when I was helping you up them stairs. And my mum always used to fix me up bras whenever oh, anything wasn't it, quite right. Not Charity, I couldn't possibly eat anything now. I, I... You was frightened. When we found you downstairs, what was it? I don't know. I felt all right, but as soon as I came inside, I I felt that I was in danger from, from someone in this house. Who could that be? I wish I knew. I can't think of anyone would want to harm you in this house. What's the matter? I can still feel it. It's like a presence. That trying to speak to me. Then you should let him. No! No, I mustn't respond. I mustn't let him find me. Who's that, love? I must resist him. Oh, oh you poor thing. You lie down for a bit. Box, I saw in my vision. Don't open it. Charity, please, just leave the room. I've got to find him alone. Who are you talking about? Charity, now? please leave the room. Judith said you weren't feeling well. Oh, I'm all right, Edward. Now that ain't the truth, love. She's frightened of somebody in Charity, the house. Charity, please. Thank you for bringing her up, Charity. You may go now. Edward, I've had another one of my attacks. Oh, Kitty. Edward, I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid we're never going to find out how to stop them. Don't say that, Kitty. Don't you understand, Edward? You were right that first time it happened. You said that it was all in my mind. Well, now I'm convinced that it is. I don't believe that anymore. But I do. Kitty, these objects that are haunting you, they're not in your mind. They're real. Edward, I'm so frightened. I feel so helpless. Edward, I don't want to be a burden to you. Edward, I, I think that I should leave Collinwood before something terrible happens. Oh, Kitty, I beg you not to leave. Oh, Edward, what, what earthly reason could you have for wanting me to remain? A very good reason. What is that? I believe there is a solution for you, one that we haven't discussed before. I believe that the trauma of being widowed so young, of losing someone who was as devoted to you as Gerald was, can over be, can only be replaced by the love of someone else. Perhaps it's wrong of me, being Gerald's closest friend, to say this, but I loved you from the moment you came to Collingwood. I'm asking you to marry me, Kitty. I had intended to propose after a proper period of mourning. Oh. If by so doing now I have offended you, I am deeply sorry. Edward, you have not offended me. Then you will marry me? Yes. Yes, Edward, yes, I will. After the ordeal was over, I, I barely knew myself anymore. As Edward told you, that uh, well, when I wandered into the office, I was in a state of shock. It must have been a terrifying experience. I don't know how you survived. Well, now that I've told you the whole story, I, I do want to apologize for the, well, the effect that my arrival had on all of you. Well, our family's had more than a share of suffering these past few months. We've learned to be wary of all strangers. That's perfectly understandable. What about your life in England? You've told us almost nothing about it. Well, there's really very little to tell. After my father died, I, 
I decided that there was no point in me staying in England, so I came to America to start a new life. Why did you want to start a new life in America? Because the roots of the Collins family were always here in America. And I felt that, uh, well, when someone is left alone in the world, it's only natural to go to where the family is. <laughs> Cousin Barnabas, I would like you to meet Lady Catherine Soames. Kitty, this is our cousin Barnabas Collin from England. How very nice to meet you. The pleasure is mine, I assure you. Won't you sit down, Kitty? Tell me, have you spent much time in London? Only on business. I uh, wondered because Lady Hampshire is from London. I don't suppose you knew her late husband, the Earl of Hampshire. No, I never had that pleasure. I see. What was your business? Quentin, I think Cousin Barnabas has answered enough questions for one night. Anyway, dinner is ready. Cousin Barnabas. Oh, very good. I hope well, now, shall we wait? some brandy? No brandy this evening, Quentin. I beg your pardon? I trust no one will object to champagne. Oh, oh well, uh, what, may I ask, is the occasion? I have a very special and important announcement to make. The ladies, Quentin. Certainly. What sort of announcement, Edward? Oh, you'll hear, my dear. I want us all to have a glass of champagne first. You'll see. There we are. Cousin. Now then. Judith, Quentin, Cousin Barnabas, I'm very proud and happy to announce that Kitty and I are going to be married. <laughs> well, well. You are full of surprises, Edward. <laughs> Congratulations, Edward. And Kitty. Thank you. When is the happy day? We haven't had time to think about it yet. We only decided tonight. I must confess that Edward surprised me as much as he did you. Cousin Barnabas, you're curiously silent. Oh, I'm sorry. May I offer my congratulations to you, Cousin Edward? Lady Hampshire, I know you will both be very happy. Thank you, Barnabas. Well, I'd... I hope you won't think it rude of me, but I think I should retire. I'm still feeling rather weak. Of course, we all understand. Thank you, Judith. It was a delicious dinner. I hope you'll feel better tomorrow. I'm sure I will. Good night, everyone. Good night. Bye. Well, Judith, now that you've met him, what do you think of him? I think he's quite open and charming. I think his story is quite plausible. Well, surely he can stay then until he's fully recovered. Well, I see no reason why not. And now I want to hear all about your plan. Well. I cannot go away. There is too much for me to do here. But I can't stay in this house and watch her marry someone else. It had happened that way before. It brought tragedy and death. Have I come back to tragedy and death again? Oh, Josette. Josette, this is over before it's even begun. I heard your call. I have come. I am your Josette. I will be all. Josette. I knew it the moment I saw you. And where have you been? Why have I to satisfy myself with a music box as a reminder? My dearest love, forgive me. There were circumstances that kept us apart. 
But now they are past. And nothing will keep us apart. Never. You seem so certain. I am certain. Then I am certain. And now no one will come between us. No one. Who is it? Who is here? Who is it? Jeremiah. Who is it? Jeremiah warned me to leave Collinwood before it was too late. That's it. Jeremiah, if it is you, leave us alone. This time it will not end as it did before. This time you will not keep us apart. Who are you talking to? What, what am I doing here? You came to me, my dearest, because... because I wanted you... You're lying! not be here unless you made me, unless you willed me, unless you're responsible for everything that's been happening to me. No, don't go. I must talk to you. I Let must me go. To you. Let me go. Let me go. I said no one could come between us this time, but I was wrong. Kitty Soames can come between us. How did you escape from Patofi? I just did. There's another friend of yours here waiting to see you. Hello, Quentin. No, it can't be. You were dead. I saw you in the coffin. You saw what we intended you to see. Oh, it was you. It looked like me, thanks to Angelique. Stands. Is some kind of trick? Or is it some new bargain you've made with Patofi? Quentin, stop torturing yourself and listen. The time is over when no one would listen to you. The time is over when you are alone. Now, this is part of my plan. I've contacted Angelique. Now you. Do you know what's happened to me? It's worse than I thought. But we will fight the Tothi. We couldn't tell you the plan until now. And now we will tell you everything if you will listen. Yes. Yes, I will listen. When Julia Hoffman arrived in the present, from the present, I knew that I could be cured of being a vampire. Then I could move off freely and fight Patofi. But I had to make sure that everyone at Colin would be convinced that the vampire was dead. To do that, we had to see to it that the vampire is dead. How did you do that? One night, before the vampire was killed, Barnabas and I were alone in a hidden room. Are you ready? Yes. Everything else that's to be done, I will do. Since death is the twin, sleep is the twin of death. And death is the twin of life. 
Sleep in this mirror until you are awakened, twin of Barnabas Collins. Sleep until you are awakened. And so Angelique trapped the reflection. That was the beginning of a doppelganger. That midnight, she went to the graveyard and came back with earth from the newest grave. As death is the twin of life, you, the twin of Barnabas Collins, take the breath of life from death. Leave the frozen world and come to life. Come to life. Come to life. That's what lies in the coffin. Yes, and that's what was destroyed. After it happened, Julia started to give me injections, but she was called back to the present. And so Angelique continued to give me the injections, all but the final one. At that time, I was in a cave not far from the coffin. When she didn't appear to give me the last injection, I went looking for her. But. Uh, I couldn't find her, and I became so ill that I looked for help. But I couldn't uh, realize where anyone was, and it was dangerous for me. I think I saw Aristide, but I, I can't remember. And then I recall being in a hospital room. Quentin was with me, or so I thought, and well, I was delighted until he pointed a gun at me and, and threatened to kill me. I couldn't understand it. You do now. Yes, I do now. How did you escape from him? Well, they kept me there until, until sunrise. I didn't know what would happen to me when the dawn came, but the dawn did come and I did not die. And then I was more or less accepted at Collinwood. Now that he's here and we all know the truth, we can help you. I can't forget that I was the one who was intended to destroy you. But I'm sorry that it had to happen that way, but we have to do things that we don't want to do and, well, until we have destroyed Potofi. We must put what's past behind us. There's still so much to be done. <laughs> where are you, Charles? Do you know yet where you are? Collinwood. Collinwood? Yes, the drawing room at Collinwood. Does it look the same as it does now? No, it's different. And the people are different, too. Who are the people? little girl and a woman. What are they doing? Another woman's just come into the room. They're greeting her and calling her Julia. Julia? Yes. She's starting to read something to them from the newspaper. It says... Never mind what she's reading. Can you see the paper closely? Yes. Can you see the date? Yes. What is it? October 28th, 1969. October 28th, 1969. What happened? What I've been waiting for, Charles. I found the right hexagram. Do you realize what that means? I know the way to the future. I know the way to the future. And nothing can stop me now.
Who is it? Beth. Oh, Beth. Have I missed you? Huh? And why didn't you come to see me? Well, I've been busy. I've been busy. Why didn't you tell that to Angelique? I know what you do. Well, perhaps I've changed. Perhaps I'm tired of sitting around Collinwood. Perhaps I see for the first time that this house is a trap, huh? Were you just going to disappear? If I had come an hour later, would I have just found you gone? Of course not. But I was coming into town, have a check cashed. Well, I was planning on seeing you and telling you about my plans. Not asking me to go along, of course. Well, I'm not going to let you go. Now, Beth, Beth, you're going to follow me. Now, listen, I have it all planned. <laughs> if only I could believe you. But you're capable of saying that to me and to Angelique as well. Listen, Angelique is away and I don't even know where and don't care. You stole these, didn't you? They're Patofis. That's why you're leaving. Oh, Quentin, you'd never get away with it. You know how powerful he is. He will uh, never find me. <laughs> I shall be years away from him. <laughs> Beth, Beth, I have found the 49th hexagram, the one that can lead to another time. No, Quentin. I have to. It's the only way I can escape Patofi. You're mad. Listen to me. Now, Patofi is not the only reason I must do this. Well, we must do this to get away from Angelique forever. We shall be safe in 1969. You're... You're really planning to take me? Well, of course I am. You don't think I would be telling you all this if I wasn't, huh? <laughs> when, when, when are we going to try? I shall try first. Now, now, look, look. Look. My body will be in a trance. Now, after it disappears, you will know that it is time to join us. I will be waiting there. Now look, look, it's the only way. Now don't think I'm trying to trick you. Now believe me. I can't do it alone. Oh, of course you can. Now, there's nothing to worry about. Trust me. Huh? I do. Are you with me then? Uh, huh? Yes. My dear. Uh, now you, uh, you just remember that we're going to have a very good time where we're going. You remember that. I will. <laughs> All right. Now, you, uh, you hurry and go into town. I want you to go to Mr. Coleman at the pharmacy and have him cash this check for me. You're taking that? Well, I have to. I uh, don't want to take the chance on somebody finding it and uh, destroying it. I don't want to start a new life with the threat of a new moon and a full moon hanging over me each time. I'll never become that animal again. But how are you going to get it there? And I'm going to bury this suitcase a hundred yards from the cornerstone of the West Wing by that grove of trees. And when I get to the future, I'll dig it up. But what if you don't remember? I've drawn a map. I'm going to take it with me. Now you're hurrying to winter town, huh? I can't change your mind, can I? No, 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 no. I want you to leave the back way. And don't let anyone see it. I don't want anyone starting to ask questions. No one must know. Hurry. Oh, <laughs> different. It was all so different. Those lights, they were glaring. The furniture, it was the same house, but it was different. Hello, love. Well, am I that much of a shock? Same old pansy. It was all so different. You know, what's wrong with you? I've seen the future. I've seen it. 
I've seen the future. If you have seen the future, you don't have to be so balmy about it. What? What'd I say? I mean, I got second sight, dearie. I see things all the time, but I don't let him phase me. Not at all. Quentin's gonna go there. He's gonna go there unless I stop. Listen, him. love, we're all going to the future as long as we last. I mean, the future's tomorrow. No, he's going to go. He's going to go there and leave me. But I'm not gonna let him. No, I won't let him. I won't. What's wrong with Mr. Tate? I don't know. He seems most disturbed, as you do. I can't take the blame for Mr. Tate's nervousness, but I believe I'm rather the cause of yours. Well, I actually... know, Miss Fay, that I look like the vampire that you destroyed. But you see, you must believe me that I was the victim of the vampire just as your fiancé was. Only I was luckier, yes. I somehow managed to save my life. So much happened in this house. So much what you can't understand. Like me and Mr. Tate. Should I go after him? Oh, no, no. He's gone up to Quentin. Imagine him saying, Quentin's going to the future. Whatever did he mean by that? I can't imagine. Can you? No, I can't. But I should like to hear more. 